In today's episode, we will be going over some of the best highlights from the matchup between T1 and HLE during the lower finals of the 2024 LCK Spring Playoffs. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Yes, yeah, so missing out so heavily in Huddle Life Esports, not even allowing Zayas to play lane 1v1, just really putting him in an uncomfortable spot right now. Alcaria making his way in as well. Speaking of uh, uncomfortable spots, that's where Zekker is as well in this first blood as Ona comes on over and is going to be able to take that one down. Can you know, relatively safely get out of any engage attempt that Doran has, but this is re basically removing the top part of the lane for Doran, putting Zayas out of early games. Could be, oh, they're looking yeah. die. The light is a pretty good bodyguard, but it's four versus two here towards the bottom side of the map. There it is! The sling does come back, but Viper will survive! And the turret is so angry, Zekka is going to move in, he finds the ulti onto Faker, who does survive the engagement! Zekka still just trying to protect his bottom lane, it's working out so far, as he unbinds the soul, finds the double knockup, seismic shot goes wide! And T1 will not find a kill down here. Beautiful defense from- Oh, oh they get the kill on a Faker! Experience with Twisted Fate when he was a mid laner as well. The way that you would counter it is by, uh, okay, I'll hold that thought as Cease and Assist does come in. Seismic shove as well, the full combo, but from over the wall, there's Viper. Delight survived for way too long, but now Carrier has dove on top of Viper. He's trying to avoid the burst fires as now the wall is going to come in. And T1, they single out the AD carry. And are we certifying it, Wolf? I mean, I think I will. It's two kills here early for the Zeri. And what else about to Hanwell Life Esports here getting a little bit ahead of themselves, trying to set up for this dragon end up losing the fight. Now they will look to try to secure this now. Owner very far away. Yeah, Carrier is going to get stunned up here. Delight just playing Bouncer. We'll try and get Owner out of here. They are not going to be able to find it. And Ox, you're right next to me. Not if it's point and click. You know, you have to catch the Zeri. You have to pick off Goom. And if you fail to do so, you will lose a team fight. Opted not to teleport without a lot of vision. Oh, there's a flash out. Zayas not risking it. I had a feeling that maybe he was going to be able to walk his way out. Um, definitely like, one of the best avoidance of CC abilities, but yeah. let's play it safe. I feel like Zayas is uh, summoners per minute already in the series. is <laughs> so high. Very um, high. We need to get that stack. Um, uh, we'll have to get someone on it. Atlas, it did look a little bit silly for Curry. You can respect the idea. Now that said, Herald is going to crash here into the mid lane as they try to take out this turret in response. Yep, that's going to do a decent chunk of damage. Not going to be able to take that one down just yet. Trade back. As far as turrets are concerned, and for T1, Alma Life Esports, though, they just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Of course, Magnus Storm's pretty good, but so is this. The cease and desist comes in, and Faker and Ona just showing Zekka that this combination of Talia and uh, and the Vi is not to be trifled with. And yeah, that's part of the issue as well. Hunter Life Esports have two carries in their composition. If you target one of them like that, if you do that to Zekka in the lead up to Aris broke down, both sums available is going to make it difficult. You know, the ult from the Yone easily dodgeable, but actually it looks like T1. You know, kind of shows you the priority what it is. A Chemtech soul, five members of Hunter Life Esports group up. T1 don't even care. Yeah. Just look to get over to T1. Humble Life Esports are on the objective. Yeah, started this one up. Carry on a flank angle. We know that the wall can always come in, and there it is for Faker. He is not going to ride it through. He's just going to try and disrupt as there is the Destiny to light off on the side, but there is the engage from Carrier. The seismic shove, and Viper is going to be wiped out. Sorry, Zeta has already gone down. The Drake is going to be secured, but that is sold for maybe just a team fight loss as Faker will take down Doran. All of that money, meaning not that much, and T1, they'll look to the Baron. And T1 never... This fight is, should be ours. Easy to take if Carrier gets the engage. He does, and now they get more than just the team fight. They're looking for Baron. Yeah, and you know, Pina is still up and available. Does have Flash, does have Smite. TP's available for Zekka and Doran, but the Baron is going down so fast. It is. Pina should be able to make it into the pit, but this is going to be a difficult 50-50 to win. He flashes forward, and they just turn on him immediately. Taken down before the Baron's in range. That going to be the secure, and T1 just level-headed the whole time. They'll take themselves their purple worm, and now the problems in the composition here for Hanwha Life, you know, even with the, the setup they have, is Doran is a huge brick wall, but when you're a player... But T1 with the Baron, he should be able to get even more of these items. Seismic Shot going to be picked up once again, as Faker finds yet another one. That's a good glacial prison, though, onto Zayas. He's going to have to get out of there. The Unbound Soul gets Zekka back to safety as well, but now the re-engage. Delight looks for it, but he's just dead before he can do anything. 
And so T1 with five man strong, still with that Baron for another minute. And they've already gotten rid Layer damage upon damage upon damage. There's no real AD carry, not traditionally anyways here for Viper. He's got to poke his way oh. through. Yeah, Seismic Shove is going to connect onto Doran as he teleports in. That is not the warm welcome that he was wanting as he looks to try and help out his teammates. Looks to try and get out of there. Gumi Ushi taking matters into his own hands as the turret will be taken down. That is it's locked in, you know, that's what yeah. you, you yeah. assume it's going to be. And now... Oh, Ona possibly with a bit of a face check here. Will be oh. taken out two seconds before the Elder! And this is one of the issues, you know, they went in for the IE, but it took some to set a trap, and because T1 are late there, Boris holding them back, it means they don't have a jungler now. Yeah, they don't have a jungler, and now Doran can do his work, and this time, it makes sense to sit on Dragon and have Doran hold the angle here. Now he's gonna have to wrap around. No 50-50 with no smite. Exactly, let's see what T1 can do. They're gonna have to try and find this to avoid losing the Elder. There's a seismic shot, and they are going to even out the numbers. It's no Doran! Okay, survives for a very long time, but then does go down. There's the Elder now, as they have the executed Zekka finds him, and a three-man shove from Faker is massive! And it's a double for Faker, they'll take a double as well for Gumiushi, and it's now only Viper left with this Dragon buff, and I don't think they care. Faker's just gonna throw some rocks at him, and that's the ace! And even Elder isn't enough, T1. The Dragon, it seems like it's gonna be doomed, but they handle the fight, they managed to lock them down. The health on Guma was so close to the execute threshold, but not quite there, and Viper just cannot do enough. Viper can't do enough, he doesn't have the time. He's playing with Aldi Bars here, and even with the miracle of owner just stepping forward there and getting caught on the life cannot take the elder f we talk about the value of those rocks the shoves into a composition like this all the time he ends up getting serious work done now oh. on the life to try to contest this baron but it's already gone yeah, yeah it's already gone there's easy t a lot of these champions for t1 can escape over the wall as you can see so they just been double team he's, he's played six unique champions of playoffs so be his seventh Oh, okay. Oh, no. Looking for that opportunity. Gets into the back line. They dive on top of Viper. He's able to get himself out. Now 1v1ing and he finds it against Zayas, the ulti. And Viper's still alive! alive. He finds the double kill. Oh, is going to be the next to go down into the GA. Is now Doran is just playing bodyguard. And T1, they couldn't do it! They killed him so many times Over and again. that time they were How here. many do they need? I mean, we already wrote the obituary. <laughs> yeah. We were memeing about Carrier and stuff. We were talking about Guma Zeri. I mean, they I was ready for game two. They threw so much at Viper. I think they just expected him to die. And I'm going to be honest, I did too. Me too. Viper, who's extremely fed. Level 18 has been for a while. Rely on your comp. You don't have to pick just because you have Vi. You can. But this comp is so good at re-engage, was what we talked about in the draft, I didn't think it was going to be relevant in this game because T1 had a 10,000 gold lead. But now, the tables have turned and Hanwha Life... ...that we've had to talk about really either, as Hanwha Life will now move towards this inner turret. They are just splitting. We are, we are getting back to even territory as the Weaver's Wall is going to be just elected into Faker, not going to be able to convince them not to break open the base. It's like you say, it could be a trade of inhibited turrets, but Hanwha Life Esports, it doesn't look like they're stopping as this Elder is still ticking down. Another five seconds on that oh! one. They find the engagement and they blow off Faker. Into the back line goes Curry. He tries to find that quickness, but he's permanently frosted and taken down. The deletion on two members. Is that enough for the end of the game? I don't think so. As Hamalife runs going to TP in. They want to look for the end They want to end. They want to end. They don't want to deal with that Weaver's Wall anymore. Or rather the flip. Oh, no! they find the engagement. Able to get out of there though is Zayas. He did have that flash available as there's a teleport back in. Owner is going to be CC'd as well as he's going in, but he's by himself. T1 are just running in one after the other. The destiny is going to be popped, but I think their destiny is one dead Nexus and zero one in the series. Humble Life Esports were down 11,000 gold and they will kill the Nexus here in game one. You know what? I think I'll take five of these, please. Yes, Humble please. Life. <laughs> they take it in the end. Early game, the lane slainer. So perhaps T1 looking to sort of mirror the shenanigans we saw in game one. I feel like playing in a Rek'Sai is just very unfun situation. And I feel like Varus is going to have the edge over Senna, so maybe they'll have Senna as Viper does find a piercing arrow on top of the Senna. And the backs are going to come through, or at least one of them for Peanut here. Teleport back from Carrier. And they now Ona might have an opportunity. They don't know. Uh, no vision. Yeah, there's the flash forward from Carrier. Viper able to try and get off to the side. Good crash down 
to try and get him out of there, but there's the permafrost, and Fight will be taken down. Kumiyushi, get me. Arexai is kind of forced to auto you uh, in trades and kind of guarantee the, the sort of healing reduction. But the thing with it oh. is you kind of just wait out the healing reduction before you are on the ground. Oh, this is a little bit dangerous. This Faker is going to get engaged on immediately. Flashes away the Glacial Prison. Going to go wide. There is the lockdown on the Dragon for T1. But Delight gets them on in there. They take down Faker. Empress Divide is massive. And has two kills to start off the fight. Carrier is not long for the world either. And Armor Life Esports, they lose a Drake, but they'll take three. This is the main criticism. They'll get their turn on this Drake. I'm watching to slow play this. They have a Varus who's rotating over. They don't have to hard engage unless it's onto the package list Faker. He's got it on this angle now. Yeah, this is so dangerous. They do manage to take down the second Dragon, but they look for the engage. There's the package to live it over the top, but it's owner that goes down first. Echo will find Faker special delivery, and it's Onwa that managed to get it on over. And it's a Hextech Drake on top of everything. T1 pretty happy that they're yeah, and I mean, again, it's Rel and it's Vi, you are the ones tanking the pack, it's not too big of a deal. T1 are going to pick up this Herald, but the mid-tier one for Hanuma looks pretty healthy, so... It's kind of ridiculous, is Gumiushi going to come on over, Piercing Darkness not going to work out, as now, let's see whether Xanth is going to survive, he flashes forward, gets the head bomb, the Empress Divide is going to throw him against the wall as they focus the turret, the Bolt Breaker is going to get the shield for Peanut, and Zeka, he survives with his Shifting Sands sets up his own turret as well as they take down the Zack. Doran, he survived. His turret had already basically fallen down earlier and the Rift Herald is going to charge into that inner turret as well. Doran actually having the gusto to take down and that's going to be a oh, TP coming in. Yeah, TP from Zekka here moves towards his top side. Is now Faker having to deal with it. Conquering Sand's going to come through and of course there's Peanut turns up. That is going to be just the last Sand Soldier auto and Zekka just collects it. I mean with Halo Blades here but well, they're very late to show up for the fight. Yeah, very yeah. late. And also, you know, Faker doesn't have that many quite stacked up yet. To get Ooh, Zayas, this flank angle pretty big, big from Zayas, like you were talking about. Carrier making his way in. The Drake already secured Hanwa's first of the game. But there is the elastic slingshot. They dive on in. The package down as well. And they take down Zekka, the priority target. Doran looks for the back line and will be able to trade the mid lane in. And there is a great Magnus Storm as well. Viper, the next one that can try and carry this fight as owner. It's Starting to pop off, but the piercing arrow going to take him down. Zayas now just trying to peel as best he can. Peanut, how are you still alive? Almost managing to escape as Viper has to flash away. Doran, of course, can just survive for basically forever. He'll make his way out as Viper was kind of baited into this one and will be falling down. Dodges a few abilities and T1 win a team fight. It's just tank diff. It's just tank diff. Both of these tanks. Oh, there. So that's another tool gone here for Hanwa. But Faker, he's just so behind in terms of his itemization, he does not match the poke of Zekka, ironically enough. Oh, no, no! Crash down, Carrier, gonna get knocked off and destroy Zayas, diving on in there. Doesn't find the stretch Armstrong, the kill back does come on in though. And now Oda, he knows how to play the Rel. And Prismite does nothing to Heartbreaker, dies over it. And Faker will now get into that back line. And Oda, pretty good at the Azir as well. Very nicely done. He'll now just transform into everyone. And the snowball of the team fight is beautiful. T1, they love going to Baron, they're gonna do so now. As soon as the momentum, you're like making the play onto carry on this super tanky farm Sejuani ends up being a mistake, especially as you were already down tools in the fight. Zekka without flash, Viper without cleanse, and they just really weren't able to do anything on the back of that. Yeah, and, and it's not really a poke war that Team 1 is winning this with, with the Faker's Corky just follow up damage from this guy, and obviously the package on the last fight where they were able to take both angles here. Hunterlife Esports going to try and take the Dragon and do what they can. Well, uh, let's see whether they can actually get some sort of steal. As Faker still in that mid lane, Doran has moved back to try and contest. The Dragon is going to equalize, and T1 will start it off once again. And Zayas does take a hex gate over. That's a teleport in from Doran. Just gets into the pit. Of course, he can do this because the Rex Aishi is so incredibly tanky. And just now, going to be burrowed around, moving in. Let's see who manages to take it. It's Peanut, the lock down the Dragon. But can they win a fight is the question. Doran unable to tunnel his way out. And that is going to be a kill going over to Zayas. Fight into Faker's package. They were just looking for secure the Drake and evacuate. And the second the smite goes Peanut's way, they bail out. Doran is a casualty of this call from Hunt of Life. But at least they're going to peel away. Faker still with that package up. They want to get that turn and they're going to need to do it. 
sometime soon. Now the package is going to be used just to try and route Dor Doran here, but it isn't exactly the most. He actually just decides to go back on top of the package. I don't know about that one. That is going to be Ono getting his first kill of the fight. Takes down the big tank of this one. And both flashes from the carries are now on cooldown for Hummel Life. And this may just be both objectives to T1 here. They could rush down this Baron now. And with Doran down, it's hard for Hummel to stop. I mean, Peter doesn't have flash. They don't have vision. All right, Peanut and Delight still here. There's the CC onto the buy. He is very tanky, but the relic's gonna go down. Faith is just executed, but I just don't think it's enough to win them this fight. Viper cannot turn up in time. Another teleport. Zeka. Going to come on in as Zeka. He could be the hero, but full information is there for T1. And they will be able to take down this Baron. Zeka unable to get in there, and he may not be able to keep himself alive. He is not enough cooldown. HLE away. Faker gets to show up without using the teleport. And that's just going to put them on 12 point. And this is just a chain of events, a domino effect of what happened with Hunter Life trying to stop that Baron. Fame over. T1 will have ample time to set up for this soul fight. Now, Hunter Life Esports are trying to attack Carrier, but you're going to take so long to kill him. Yeah, this is taking forever. And there is no damage here in this fight. Remember, this is a lot of tanks. Of course, there is Peanut there. They will be able to get through the Sejuani, but they have to invest everything to take him down. And they'll lose an inhibitor for it. They may even lose the base as the backs have now been started behind. Life. He's more no, doing cattle no. just to stop them, and they'll take the first Nexus turret. There is so much damage under these turrets as well with the Corky in the center. I don't think that was worth it, Hummel Life. Absolutely not. Troll that they have is way more oppressive. Threatening that bottom inhibitor, taking it down as Peanut now in trouble. Yeah, Perry just going to interrupt him here as Peanut tries to take the Hexgate, but it is not going to work out. He gets himself a big old shield and is just going to be taken out. There is now Ono turning in a bit like he was throwing away his life there. Yeah, I mean, he could, could have maybe tried to set up for a sandwich, but there's just no control. He's identified early. Oh, God. Oh, Delight taking so much damage here is now T1 pushing down this mid inhibitor turret. That is going to evaporate. And this feels a whole lot cleaner. There is the engage. The elastic switch up. Fantastic by Zayas to make sure they're all CC. The Empress Divide tries to get something done, but it's from the grave. Berserker, and once again, just engaging with Reckless Abandon is that gorgeous this game. And T1, they will answer back and make this best of five, a best of three, and win one against Humble Life for the first time this playoffs. And I feel like, you know, game one, we saw Humble Life competition. Luna is going to be trying to accomplish the fires he's going to be trying to put out here in this early game. He is going to have to level up massively, I think, going into this one. These are the types of games where Peanut has had owner's number. When they have Permafrost taken up already here, even with Zaka having a little bit of control mid lane, Peanut will come and suss this out, but he is on vision. Yeah, T1 with some priority here towards his bottom side. We'll move up as three. Try and answer this as Peanut pokes his head in. That is a decent searing charge, but Arc Consult gets Peanut out of there, but now won't have that Q available. That will be the Drake going over to T1. First mountain collected here for Peanut, I believe, has slinked towards the north of this lane right now. It just wants Zayas to commit to a trade. The instrument ability aggressively. Oh, there's the hook! And Zelai throws out the lantern there as well. I don't think they'll require it. Zayas looks to try and charge up that dash. Just amazing. Oh. The OT's gonna go wide as well. The all out to bring Zayas out of there. And he didn't even need Ona's help. The we'll be able to move first here from mid. So let's see what Zelai can actually get done here, Chain. Not quite going to connect, but there is the ram. It's going to get called, gets a knockoff only on to Delight right now, but his owner goes down so incredibly low. Super Mega Death Rocket coming in. Dawning Shadow to try and keep them alive. And Doran is just dashing around with reckless abandon. The Drake goes to harm life. And they manage to pick up Zayas. Emperor's Divide used just to get them the heck out of there. As off, what are you doing, mate? Uh, the fear of committing with the Emperor's Divide to try to kill uh, that enemy top laner who's teleported in, Doran. Is, uh, is we're gonna have a bit of a fight over this. Um, yeah. It's just that you you don't know exactly the angle Zeka's gonna take, which still ultimately was their demise there. And the Emperor's Divide is used so late just to secure the rest of the members retreating. Could have been even worse there for the side of T1. Just a great angle from Zeka, and it felt like a heavy. Ooh, Peanut does move his way in, but Ona able to get himself out of there, and will be just fine. 
Um, Kano going to stop him one more time, as this is getting a little bit rough now. Zeka moving on over, there's the ulti, it does come on through, they dive on in. Empress Divide going to be avoided here by the Yone, but it comes to Miyushi, over the wall goes Peanut, and he's once again met with another T1 member, and they are routed where they stand. I mean, this is a huge overcommitment and backed off, uh, especially since they didn't have backup on the play. They are now looking for this Herald, though. T1 are moving to try and follow up, Zeka does have TP. Yeah, Doran has made it in. There is the teleport for the Yone. Zayas off on an angle, has a Mega Blast turn to get himself into that front line exactly where he wants to be. Death Sentence goes wide, and now Doran into the mist has been a bit immune, but Kumiyushi, he's not. The Yone dives on top of him. Super Mega Death Rocket needs yet another fight. Started off with a Jinx getting excited. His owner not able to get his own reset. Great hook, but it's onto Zayas. That's not a priority target. And that movement speed for Viper is now wearing off. Oh, that Q. But it's a great catch from Delight. And Peanut's going to lock down that kill. Now, Kumiyushi running for the hills. Great lens. But it's not going to dodge a rocket. That is going to go into the back of his head. And T1 won. Back of these two picks is just massive. Yep, Sejuani value for Humalife Esports cannot be overstated. And once again, this time Peanut having an even better performance than what we saw in game number one. I feel like he's much more present, maybe too present, if we're going to include that uh, play previously. But it's definitely better to go that direction than it is the direction of passivity, I think, especially. Play to get to that next level, that unexpected play that could possibly just create that edge. That might be throwing Shelly down here towards this top side as Zayas deals with the minion wave really nicely. The ulti is buffered and it's thrown out by Zayas as well. So he's not going to die and not going to be able to catch the Yone. Of dealing oh. with the pressure there. You do see them moving over to capitalize. So now with this pressure on the top of Jung Oak. Yeah, Kumushi actually sticking around for a little bit longer than he needs to as the Permafrost and Super Mega Death Rocket to give the kill to Viper. So that's a Esports about not being able to deal with tanks at all they just in the previous they just game. Double TP. They know Doran doesn't have TP. They just double TP the starter. This is a wild attempt, but it's going down fast. Yeah, the uh, control ward in the back of the pit is going to be taken down, but it does give Homolife Esports full information. Hook now going to come on through. Flame Chompers go down. They do manage to secure the Baron, but can they find the fight as they split the Red Sea as in goes the Yone finds absolutely no one. Double knock up from Carrier is fantastic, and they're on top of Viper in an instant. Double kill for Faker, and this is on top of the Baron they've already taken. Homolife Esports just caught napping, and this is how we completely denies the right side of the fight as Faker follows up with the Emperor's Divide. A beautiful Baron take for T1. Absolutely gorgeously played. They'll now move over, even out the Dragon count as well. The kill count uh, actually just evened out there by T1, but I feel like it is so much here for a little while. Not really able to engage or flank with no vision, no teleport wards for Zekka. Yeah, they do have the teleport, so there's at least that. He can teleport onto the ward or something like that. They get a nice knock up onto Doran, but he's just barely inside the mist. They do get the Glacial Prisoner's Carrier. May have stepped too far forward. That is a lot of CC, but he just baited them in. And then the ram comes down. Viper trying to dodge, but he's going to get thrown back into the waiting arms of T1. It's more kills for the god of the mid lane, and T1, they're looking to take more. It feels like Honor Life Esports aren't prepared. T1 firing on all cylinders. They're the ones setting the pace of the game. Where is Zeka in that fight? They're just not present. It feels like they kind of have the game two just fallen out of control. And T1, they are driving the pace of this game, driving the pace of the city. I'm looking to end here and now. Yeah, and frankly, after the beginning of game one, is Ooh. Zeka here not going to get anything done with this? Yeah, Doran, he's, uh, he's inside his mist, and he will be able to at least protect this Nexus Tower for now, 23 minutes into the game. These great hooks. I feel like the only person they would want to go on is Guma, but Guma has cleanse. So even if he does hit a hook on, on Guma, it gets cleansed. They're probably not going to go in on it. So the fact he hit two hooks onto Faker in that passage of play, and neither of them was a signal to go, just shows how rough the state of the game, in, game is for them now. And how powerful Baron is into a copy, comes back online, and Faker can just solo this Baron with the upgraded Leandris. Yep, the uh, Dragon is not going to be long for this world, Dragon. Yeah. As Hummelife Esports, they definitely need to be towards that Baron, like you were talking about, Wolf. That is exactly where they are. Drake is going to be secure. Yep. Just finish Rabadons as well for Faker, if I'm going back in on that, so... And uh, we do have Zekka taking down this Drake, so that's going to even things out as far as Dragons are concerned. If he stays on it, 
Does have teleport, can join this fight at a moment's notice. As T1, they have got this Baron down extraordinarily low. I think it's actually going to be taken this time. Never mind, they are going to turn the big teleport as Empress Divide is going to be flashed out of the ulti avoided once again. As Zeka also gets himself out of trouble. Doran going golden, but he is so incredibly low and will be taken out. The hook comes in and there is another round to come down. Peanut flashing away and this time the Searing Charge is not going to do it. But Delight is not going to be oh, so lucky. The double knockup is gigantic from Seko who once again drifts away from the fight. But Humble Esports have lost too much and T1 have lost no one. They lost no one, no kill. Faker mistimes the ultimate, but Zekka's not able to follow up with anything there. And it's not a trade. We've seen so many of the trades go on life's way with one for one. Viper lives. Oh, Peanut possibly engaged on here as Jonas Strong is giving us the full zoom. That is massive. The snare is Zekka going to be taken out at the same time as the Baron. Kumeyushi with the fancy moves. And T1 are going to march up the... It's open, so this could just be doubling him for T1 before Zekka's even back up. Whoa! Uh, Doran not immune. Uh, I can confirm. Taking a lot of damage here from Faker with that Leandri's anguish. And T1 going to take their first Nexus turret. That was dead in a blink of an eye. One they cannon still in here. position, yeah. Still allowing them to continue to put the pressure on. They can take out this inhibitor here in top side. Two and Hibs down, waiting for that next wave. Hanwha life, seven seconds for Zekka, but how much of an impact will his ult really make? It hasn't been his day here, it hasn't been his game. Yeah, there's the ram once again. It is the ulti from Peanut, but not able to interrupt the call of the Forge God. Now Doran doing a lot of work with his scissors as Peanut able to get back, but that's not a reset for Viper. Just barely not able to get it done, and the Yone falls down. It's under the locks, that one up, and now it's his turn to pop up in the fight. Faker finds a triple just immediately, and T1 moved to match point. Five the vein. That's who I am. My name is Zayus. And it's obviously going to be pretty strong in isolation into the Rek'Sai, but it can be very risky into this composition, especially if shut down early. I feel like one of the things with the knock to make it there, with the back coming in from Zayus, doesn't get to take teleport, of course, on the vein. You do want to have as much mobility as possible on this champion. And so therefore, while he was back, Doran's able to equalize the lane just a little bit. So mid ended up winning the game, but he was able to get a ton done on the Zeri. Oh, they have spotted that Gumiushi is possibly alone. There's the paranoia as Peanut dives in. He flashes on top of the CC. He's going to be there. The Crescent goes too good from Ona. He's just going to get them out of there. Zekka will turn up. They do manage to take down the Varus, but the Zeri, nothing she can do. And T1 will win the skirm. And what did Ox just say? You know, the first gank, the first attempt complete. So dark, I had question marks over my head. Is this even work out? You don't have prior, you don't have control. The light will get taken Whoa. out here as well. No yeah, exit, he's up. Uh, well, I, I got a little bit confused. I looked over at you, Wolf, and then I'm like, wow, he's flashing. I'm calling really a miss here, the draft, giving Hanwa very little agency, very little options in this game. Well, I mean, that was their option, right? Like, this was the fight that they needed to kind of win. T1 read them like a book. They're now going to be able to take themselves a Drake. They'll uh, convert that into pushing ever further in side lanes. And speaking of which, now Zayas, with the fact with the team on his back, and he hasn't, it hasn't been his day. And he is a player that has required a day. As now, that was a decent sidestep there for Gumiushi, but there is no way he's surviving this one. Peanut, able to lock one down. And so there is the first. Has not been the case. Like, this Nocturne pick, some a big hole in draft as Carrier going in. Yeah, the hook does come on down there as they do get a stun. Carrier just all by himself. And he's really dead, guys. We'll see whether Hummel Life Esports can turn this into any extra of a kill. They give the kill over to Zekka there. You know, I... Yeah, they've hit a signal back up now. Dragons up in 20, but they're actually setting up for the Herald here. Zekka's not here, doesn't have TP, so this is definitely advantage T1 as he's trying to rush his way over. Hanwha, you can just give this up and go for the Dragon instead. Yeah, Weave as well. Coming on through as Faker going to join the rest of his team. Doran just uh, watching, well, actually not, tunneling around, burrowing. Guys, nice, just go Dragon. Oh, here's another possibility as the Magnet Storm comes on down. Chains of Corruption are not going to be enough to stop this one as Viper gets his first carrier. He's now in the back of the pit with absolutely nowhere to go. It's a double as the burst fire. And they're like, you know what? We'd like a little bit more. I think like, T1 thought, thought is there. I think T1 thought they were going to be pushing towards the Dragon as well. And it's not the way I thought it was going to happen with Zekka, but it's in fact Delight who makes the clutch play there with the Magnet Storm engaged. Gets by for those two kills. And that is a very scary thing for T1 here is now. A gold lead for Hanwha Life. The early game so much in T1's favor, but some overextended, some small mistakes. Off until that dragon. 
It's Once a big and I think all some is gonna be back up. Oh, oh dear, Empress Divide just gonna throw Carrier back. That is gonna be one pick, but the Baron just spawned 30 seconds ago. Possible opportunity here as they have so much vision denial as well. This is the team you need to see. They're gonna bring it to five. Well, there is going to be some nice drifting coming on through there from Carrier. He's yeah, trying to like send the Rift Herald into the turret. One thing with that previous play is you didn't get any summoners. You didn't really get... It's like too far before. They might be threatening the Baron. They're not moving towards this, the Dragon area. So this will be taken by Hunter Life Esports. Maybe they're just going to take this top tier one. But the threat is there. I mean, Faker, they have top side push and Faker can just put up a wall if they do want to start this, but they have not. So I think they're just going to give up the Dragon here and look to try to push Doran. Oh, Doran could be in so much trouble. There are four people coming on over that flash hook. Just amazing from Carrier, the seismic shove to push him back in. And if they just keep him CC'd, he is going to die. That guy goes down. T1 get their pick, and they might also get a Baron. Uh, tough call to make here. This is not the same decisive 20-minute Baron we saw in Game 3. Yeah, this is dangerous, because Peanut's still here, and he has access to a light switch. Zeka has Flash ult as well. This is really risky. Yeah, Paranoia does come down. There's a Flash Magnus Storm, but it's only on to two. Delight not quite, quite finding the same amount of value, and he is going to be taken down. It's now Viper versus Zayas. Zayas actually trying to tumble around this fight, but he's crashed into that condemn. Amazing onto Zeka, as the Baron is going to go down. It's going to be Ona that takes it. Not able to find it is Peanut, and he's even taken down by Faker. Zeka gets rid of Carrier in the end, but they only lose one. So a little bit worried about these choke points. Delight. Delight has one heck of a flank angle. As information trying to be picked up here. Ona might be their target as Paranoia comes on in. Ona able to talk to the rest of his team. Crescent Guard does come out. He's taking a lot of damage, soaking a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. And the kill goes over to Viper. There is the... Anyway, so T1 didn't have much time to use it anymore regardless. Dragon, Ona's going to be up from that. Oh, Baker. Oh, no, there's the face check. The crash down comes on in and Peanut, he will be able to get the fear off. Yeah, he does manage to get the rocks down, but that is going to be the last auto and that one might act sensing all of those vibrations. This is, this is Soul Point. This is a massive spike. This is Aie's area as well, so this is really fast. Yeah, really fast. And also, it's three Mountain Dragons. If oh, they get Ona is likely to be able to get in there, though. That is going to be the secure from Peter. And there is the Flash Magnus Storm. Delight getting in there. Viper is altered as well, but the first kill is going to go over to T1. Delight now in trouble, and he is going to be taken out. And now Zayas, he is an AD carry as well, and he is looking gigantic in this one. That is going to be him hunting down Viper. He is going to be able to help take down Peanut as well. The hook from Carrier is just too good. And T1 are going to strike again. And cut your losses. It's up for a little bit of a flank angle. As Faker is moving around. Carrier not going to risk taking too much poke damage here. As Viper takes down the blue buff. A little T1. bit risky. They are going to back away. Yeah, oh, T1. They might just push mid. Yeah, exactly. I think this is a way better call. They have way more control of the mid lane. They could just shove this through. And they maybe even look for a collapse on the door. And while Hanwha are split, yeah, there's a Hex Flash over Look at Zayas' damage onto this turret as well. It's just gone. No, it's ridiculous. He's managed to complete his Trinity Force. Sports looking to try and start this Baron off as Carrier finds himself a hook. There's the Blast Cone. Tons Trying of to damage. Interrupt the action. Yeah, this is going to be fast here. T1 have to be decisive. Weaver's well ready for Faker. Yep, Faker going to get that one in there yeah. as Delight off to the side. Not necessarily in the best position here. They dive over. It's actually going to be Yuki again! Taking the Baron with the arrow! We've seen that one before. It's now Crescent God. Ona diving on in, and he just takes down Peanut. Matters into his own hands. And now Delight tries to go for the re-engage, but who's tankier? It is Carrier this time. And now Zayas, this is where he thrives. Viper just taking thirds of his health at a time, although dishing back a fair bit himself. And so Zayas going to retreat to the side lane. I think that's when immediately Hunter Life Eastwood are looking for something. Well, they are definitely looking for it now. Tunnel does come in to flash out immediately from Faker. He is not risking it. He knows exactly what you say. But they just burn Paranoia yeah. with 10 seconds still Dragon, so... Oh, the Black Hook, and he manages to find Zeka! Free delivery with the Seismic Show! Carrier finding the angle! That may have been the game-winning play. Carrier, he's just taken this game into his own hands. He and Onyx out. Oh. Zayas, will he be stopped? Viper on a, a weird angle there, trying to see whether maybe they could layer some CC, but it's not going to work out. The Zeri with the man disadvantage is just not going to be as scary in these team fights. I'm like, these once they lose yet another inhibitor this series. And now it's a 10,000 gold lead between the two teams. Absolutely massive this point. They're going to be able to pick up that third dragon as well. And Honor Life Esports 
it's feeling so rough. I think a big problem is when you fall behind with a composition like this, you're relying on being able to jump in on the Nocturne, having follow-up. A going on a target without summoners, but, you know, Faker obviously doesn't have his flash, but isn't an easy target to get on top of. There's so many threats. Dragon area control is important though, because Mountain Soul with a quad stack, that is a lot of defenses. Of course, they have a vein. They, uh, she can cut through pretty comfortably, but AK1 are looming. And yeah, like you said, I mean, Faker, he's got the wall. He can just build that. He is trying to put that one together now as Peanut is now in this pit. Can they win the smite is the question. Great spell shield comes on down, and that's the engage here from Ona. He tries to hold on. Hook not really doing too much, but it is Ona that takes the soul for T1. It's gigantic now because they're the ones with the shield. They're the ones with the control. Oh, wow. And the Hook is going to find this Ari. She is able to press that cleanse flash button, try and get himself out of there. But it's Delight that falls to flank out from Say it's the flash. The tumble and the vein is going to find the fight. He goes invisible and snipes out the Zeri. And this man maybe should just become the 80 carries. So There's good. the cleanup from the vein. You needed a fantastic grab from Carrier. It kicks off the fight. You know, on like Eastwood thought T1 got the soul and walked away. But once again, T1 have controlled the game, controlled the series, and are now looking to end. 16 out of 18 KP for Carrier. And it looks like T1 have done it. Another finals. The Gen Z T1 prophecy, it just keeps delivering. And on the sixth time of asking, T1 will do it again. Another grand. These were some of the best highlights from today's LCK 2024 Spring Split matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.